Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got looks at pre-earthquake signals. We'll see how the AMOC collapse risk has been obscured by larger considerations being given too much weight. And we've taken a strong geomagnetic storm overnight that requires more than a quick mention. You are watching the last 24 hours on our star, and while M-class solar flares have persisted, they have not increased in power, and they have not sent CMEs in Earth's direction. In the live show last night, we were looking into why the KP index was on the rise, and while we had some ideas, rising to KP7 wasn't part of the discussion absurd. The solar wind really didn't get any more intense than it already was, and how we surged up to a level 3 solar storm when none was predicted or forecast is a true testament to how weak Earth's magnetic field has become, how vulnerable our planet is now to space weather. Folks, when we examine the solar wind, there's nothing explaining these strong solar effects, at least not without the weakening of Earth's magnetic field in the ongoing pole shift. In addition to having to report outsized solar storm impacts for the hundredth time in three years, we are on sunspot watch for more eruptions. Both the incoming and southern departing group of most interest has kept right on growing. Very hard to imagine those stay quiet today, so solar flares are on watch right now. Up next, we're going to two papers on pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals. One found every electrodynamic factor in play before a 7.7 .7 earlier this year, atmospheric, lithospheric, and ionospheric. And the other one focused on total electron content in the atmosphere and critical frequency of the F2 ionospheric layer before the great magnitude 9 quake in 2011 in Japan. The big ones always snitch on themselves before the shaking starts. And today's top story. Folks, the main takeaway here is that the focus of geologists on long-term orbital precession has obscured the quickness and severity of the abrupt or rapid collapse events of the AMOC. Likely much more common and easier to trigger than geologists had believed, which surprises not one single person watching this show, and which confirms the several papers we've seen before suggesting we are going to be having an abrupt or rapid collapse event of the oceanic heat transports in the next few years. Folks, this coming weekend, the major prepper events begin at Observer Ranch. World class, bridging the gap, focusing on high elevation survival with world experts. Then next weekend, it's the Colorado Prepper Expo. I'm speaking at 1 p.m. on Saturday, and I do hope you guys make it out to the ranch, just a short drive away from the event center. The experience the next weekend is the personal deep dive into a demigod level of toughness for mental and spirituality. The drive, the fearless persistence, the reliability 365 days a year that you see here, wouldn't you like that in your life as you prepare for the disaster as well? Go to the special link below, watch the introduction video, see if the event is for you. And then in November, we keep going. I'm told our combat team actually likes to call it self-offense, not self-defense. Observer Speed Dating is looking like it'll be another good one, November 7th and 8th. Documentary premiere event on the 15th and the last Pole Shift Conference of the year on the 16th. We hope to see you out here, observerranch.com. Special link below if you want to come to the experience, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.